Well, welcome to Conversations Live, where we bring you the best in music, books, entertainment, and current events. When the movers and shakers of the world have something to say to you, they say it to us. Now, here is your host, Cyrus Webb. And welcome back, everyone, to Conversations Live. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. When I say the name Tavis Smiley, many things will come to mind. He's not only a radio and television show host, he's also a best-selling author and an individual that's definitely passionate about causes that are near and dear to him. He's making his first appearance on our program today to talk to us not only about the journey he's been able to have in front of the camera, but also what it's been like for him to not only have a vision, but to be able to live that vision each and every day. Tavis, hello to you, and welcome to the program. I'm delighted to be on your program, Cyrus. Thanks for the invitation. Hey, I am so honored to be able to have you. I have to say before we get started here, Tavis, one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on, there are three people that truly inspired me as I was growing up in Brandon, Mississippi. And those three people were LeVar Burton, of course, because of the work that he was able to do with Reading Rainbow, Oprah Winfrey, mm-hmm. of course, and yourself. And and the reason and and I was and I say that sincerely because it really showed me not only what is possible but what hard work, dedication, and faith will get you. You have had a remarkable run, not only as I said on radio and television, but also been able to inspire people through the work that you've been able to do, even outside of those shows. What has it been like for you, Tavis, to not only have been able to make a profession, but also to show people what is possible for their own lives? Well, first of all, I'm honored to be on your program and honored to be in such esteemed company with Mr. Burton and uh, Ms. Winfrey. They've uh, done some remarkable work, and uh, I appreciate your your kind words, particularly given that, like you, I'm a fellow Mississippian born on the Gulf Coast down there in Gulfport, Mississippi. Um, So I spent my early years in Mississippi. My mother uh, is a native of Mississippi and my grandmother, so my family roots run deep in that state and uh, always honored to do anything for a fellow Mississippian. Um, The short answer to your question is I I, have been blessed beyond measure, and you're right about the fact that that hard work um, does uh, does make a difference, but um, I I call um, my journey a journey of of, of the three Fs, a journey of faith, family, and friends, and in that order, faith, family, and friends. I have an abiding faith in something much bigger uh, and deeper than me because there are some moments where you run into difficulties where, your mama can't help you, your daddy can't help you, your, your banker can't help you. You've got to have something that you can call upon that's a little bit deeper than any uh, than any friend or family member. Uh, so my faith has been terribly important to me. My family, um, again, my mother from Mississippi, my father from Georgia. So I have these deep southern roots, and uh, and in those roots, my friend Cornell West says that our roots, our R-O-O-T-S, help determine our routes, R-O-U-T-E-S. Your roots determine your roots or routes, depending on how yeah. you want to pronounce it. And so those roots in Mississippi have have, uh, have served me well in terms of having the kinds of morals and values and ethics and social mores that I think have stood well uh, for me over the course of these 20-plus uh, uh, years that I've been in this broadcast business. And finally, my friends, I've got a lot of good friends. Uh, none of us makes it by ourselves. None of us walks this journey alone. Our destinies as a human race are inextricably linked. And so I've had a lot of good friends who have ushered me into some pretty amazing places, given me some pretty amazing opportunities, taken me to some amazing places around the world. So the combination of faith, family, and friends is so much of what uh, has allowed me to, to be and to do uh, what God um, has created in me so far. There's a whole lot more to, whole lot more to, to come, I hope. Yeah. I, I imagine there would be. Travis, you know, and you mentioned, of course, the places you've been able to go. And let's just talk about the people you've been able to converse with. I mean, as I have been and listened to your program and a viewer of your program over the years, to be able to see these, these movers and shakers literally from every corner of the globe, to be able to speak with them, to really be able to have this dialogue with them and to and to get to some real answers to questions, you know, that in itself, I think, you know, is a remarkable feat. Do you think part of the reason, though, you have been able to, to really connect, and that's the thing. I mean, you think about the success you've had, especially on television, you know, in the, in the history you know, of television, being able to have the program that you've been able to have. Do you think the reason why so many connect with you is because you are so much like them? You're like us, that you truly want to get the answers to the questions that matter. I guess I think it's a very astute analysis, and I thank you for the compliment that was hidden in there. Um, my, my, this, this, the short and simple answer is this, um, and you obviously are, are very good at this yourself. I tell young people all the time when I'm talking to them about about the media and about broadcast and journalism that what matters most is being a generous listener. It really doesn't matter how talented you are, how how well you've done your research, 
how good you look on camera, how good your voice sounds on radio. What matters most is whether or not you are prepared to be a generous listener. I always make a distinction between an interview, Cyrus, and a conversation. An interview is, you know, your producers give you a blue card, uh, and on the blue card are ten questions that you need to ask in the time that you have with the guest, and you run down your blue card of the ten list, the, the ten questions your producers have given you or the ten questions you've written yourself. But you've got ten questions. You're going to ask those ten questions in order. No matter what the person says, all you try to do is to get your questions out and get their answers in. That's an interview. And that's not the way to conduct um, a conversation. A conversation is more dynamic. It's more organic. It's more authentic. In a conversation, the host really isn't leading the conversation. You're really following the conversation. So all you really need to do is to start the conversation out with one good question. And if you listen to the answers that the guest is giving you, the guest will give you the route. Based upon their answers, you will know what a good follow-up question is. Based upon what they tell you, you'll say, wow, I didn't know that. Let me ask you about that. Based upon their answer, you will know what the next question will be. But you'll never know that if you're just looking at your list of questions on your blue card and you're not being a generous listener. So conversations are not about so much you know, you pressing your points, but rather you listening generously to what the guest has to say. So that's a long way of saying that the experience that most, that the experience that all the guests on my radio and television programs have is that of sitting next to a person who has done his research, who has a little bit of a, a little bit of intelligence, who's good at what he does because I've worked at it, but most importantly wants to put them in their sweet spot. I want them to have a good experience, and the way for them to have a good experience is for me to listen, listen, listen generously to what they're telling me. And if I listen to what's coming out of their mouth, which is coming from their heart, which is coming from their head, if I listen to all that, I would know where to take the conversation. And then when the conversation's over, this person has ended up saying stuff they didn't expect to say, telling stories they didn't expect to share, revealing secrets they didn't really want to put out there. Because if you listen to their heart, you would know where to take the conversation. But all of that happens with a generous listening. If you're going to be in this business and you're not prepared to be a generous listener, if all you want to do is talk, because you are a talk show host and you're not prepared to listen and you're not a curious person, then what's the point of being in the business in the first place? Oh, wow. That, that is great advice, I think, for so many different professions, Darius. But I, 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 I totally receive that. That is so true. You mentioned a word in there, authenticity. And I think that, mm -hmm. again, is why you're able to connect, even outside of the, the radio and television. I mean, I mentioned some of the other things that you're able to do. I mean, I see you on, on other news shows. You're able to, you know, to, to be there, to be able to give informed information. You're also mm -hmm. to be an advocate for causes that matter to you. You mentioned Dr. West, you know, being able to be with him, talking about issues that matter with you and that. That, again, I think is part of that connection and, and such an influence that you've been able to have. Did you always believe that was possible? Because I think that's the thing for so many people, mm -hmm. you know, as you mentioned, uh, us both being from Mississippi, people sometimes look at wherever they're from or wherever their their parents or grandparents may have done and think those things just aren't possible. Did you always believe that if you stayed with your faith, that you, that if you stayed true to that, that these things will be possible for you? Powerful question, and I don't mean to proselytize, but since you raised it, I believe uh, that biblical edict that with God all things are possible. So I've never believed that anything for me was really impossible. I, I believe I've had to work hard and have some good fortune and have some good, you know, have a deep faith and some good, good friends and a strong family supporting me. But I've never really believed that things were impossible. And I'm glad you raised that because part of what's what's causing the 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 the, the difficulty, what's 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 generating the challenge that so many young people have in our community is they don't believe that things are possible. There is put another way, there's so much hopelessness. Uh, in our community, and that's one of the things that we're up against more than anything else. It's just this rampant hopelessness in our community and in our society and the fear that is palpable in people because they're afraid that the best days of this country are behind it as opposed to in front of it. And people who are stuck in poverty and stuck in, in disenfranchised situations politically, economically, or culturally just don't see a way out. My friend Susie Roman says there's a highway into poverty, but not even a sidewalk out. So once you get in, people just don't think there's ever a chance that they're going to have a life of any real meaning, purpose, or value. So I've never really believed that things were, 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 were impossible, but I, I've always believed uh, that it required me using the gift and skill and talent that God gave me. Here's what I believe, that every one of us has been blessed with a gift 
for the gift that you have been given, there is a purpose. There's no reason for the Creator to have endowed you with these gifts if there was no need for the gift. Whatever gift you have, somebody needs. Somebody is out there who's preparing to be benefited by that gift. So we've all been given gifts, and there's a corresponding need for the gift. When your gift connects with its need, now you're living a life of purpose and a life of value. So the first question is to figure out, what is the gift I've been given? What is my talent? What have I been blessed with as 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 an offering to other people? What is it? That, what is it that I can do better than anybody else I know? None of us comes into the world without being given gifts and talents. Once you discover what that gift and talent is, then you need to perfect that and go in search of the need for that gift. Put another way, there'd be no reason for me to be even reasonably articulate if there was no no, no issue for me to talk about. I mean, why be given a voice? to sing if there's nothing for you to sing. I mean, for every gift that we have been given, there is a use for it. There's a need for it. Somebody is waiting to be blessed by the gift that you have. So your gift needs to find its need. When those two things conjoin, you're living a rich life.